Welcome to the Dr. Gabrielle Lyon Show, where cutting edge science meets innovation and practical application for everybody. Dr. Anurag Singh, welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks for having me, Dr. Yes. Lyon. Yes. Yeah, pleasure. Um, you're an MD, PhD. Mm -hmm. The story is 15 years plus. Uh, so we started with a very simple idea that we're going to disrupt how science is done in the nutrition area. So a lot of companies uh, were blending probiotics, prebiotics, multivitamins, and, and just you know starting to sell products in the market. And there was very so we said let's bring the biotech approach to nutri to nutrition. And uh, we started with this idea that we're going to find new natural compounds that had previously not been attributed any health benefit to. So we started with thousands of compounds. Uh, we looked at what was the superfoods at that time. Pomegranate was one of them. Um, berries were another one. So we started looking into it, pomegranate, and you won't believe it. We went around the world. We went to wow. Israel. We went to uh, Spain. We sourced pomegranates from around the world just to see what, what was in the different pomegranates. So let's say the first four or five years of that journey was just deconstructing the pomegranate. And we found like hundreds of compounds in the pomegranate. And then we started studying which were the key actives that would have these immense health benefits. Zeroed in on urolithin A at that time, which was thought to be a waste product. Uh, Why urolithin A? In, in the aging field, so we were very, always very focused on the aging field. We gave these hundreds of compounds to this professor of, who was very famous in the mitochondrial field called Professor Ulrichs. And he came running. He, he did not know. We had blinded him. And he came and said, what is this one compound that you gave me because it's extending the lifespan of worms because that's where all the aging research starts by like 45 percent. Wow. And nothing else matches that except caloric restriction. So things like NAD boosting uh, modulation does boost the lifespan by 20 percent. Um, resveratrol, for example, does a similar 15 to 20 percent. Uh, metformin comes the closest to caloric restriction, 40%. So he was so excited that he said 45% and calorie restriction does it by like 50, 55%. And then it was clear to us that we needed to take it to humans, do multiple randomized trials. And that's what we have been doing till about a few years back. We got convinced to launch the products. Wow. You can be drinking a glass of juice or a bowl of berries, but a lot of people, about two thirds of the population doesn't have the right gut microbiome. And so that started the other side of the story that if two thirds of the world healthy population is not able to make this molecule naturally, like, you know, we need to supplement them. And so that's, mm. that's the whole. What does it do and why do we care about it? So great question. So urolithin A is a very potent natural activator of mitophagy. So for your audience, mitophagy is this well-conserved garbage disposal pathway in, in our cells, it's very much like autophagy, which is, you know, autophagy being cleaning up waste in a cell. So it's really autophagy inside the mitochondria. Now, what happens with aging with stress is that we always have this concept of a balance between healthy mitochondria and, and unhealthy mitochondria. And as we age and our muscles age or our brain cells age, we shift that balance towards more unhealthy mitochondria. So a lot of mitochondria that are damaged. And, and you need to recycle them. And, and that's a process that goes on an autopilot. But with aging, it kind of stops or gets very slow. And, and so you really have a lot of waste inside your mitochondria that you, you can't clean out. And so Parkinson, for example, is a mitophagy problem in the brain. Uh, sarcopenia, I believe, is a problem in, in the muscle. And so what urolithin A does very well is it revs up the garbage disposal machinery. It's almost like the garbage taking van shows up at your door every day. And once you clean the waste out, what happens is now the cells have the building blocks to create newer healthy mitochondria and they make more energy. So that's really the fundamental uh, process how urolithin A works. When you clean the waste out, these become building blocks of newer healthy mitochondria. So that's biogenesis. And we see in multiple randomized trials, we, cr we see mitophagy happen very fast. And then after a month of supplementation, it all becomes biogenesis. So it's, that's the key point. It's not like if you keep taking urolithin A forever, you will always be inducing mitophagy. You, cr you clean the waste and you get a lot of near healthy mitochondria. Come. Uh, let me give you an example. My husband, who is very into running marathons, mm -hmm. 
he swears by it. Mm -hmm. Here's what he says. And this is just purely anecdotal. Mm -hmm. He is a very fit former Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. And what he will tell you is he feels that his endurance has increased and mm -hmm. his energy is increased. And he noticed that after, um, I think it was after maybe two months or so, mm -hmm. where he really noticed a difference physically. Mm -hmm. I would say he's an extraordinary healthy individual. Mm -hmm. My question is, would this compound in the data, you know, for the data, not just anecdotally, mm -hmm. help an individual who is already has efficient mitochondria and if one could even test for that? So Urolitin A acts on two fronts. One, it, it initiates better muscle recovery. So now you, again, you, you clear out the waste faster that overtraining is causing, and so you get better endurance. The second is a lot of these individuals get inflamed very fast. A lot of athletes are inflamed. They have very high C-reactive protein, which is a marker yeah. of inflammation. So muscle recovery in clinical trials is mostly looking at creatinine kinase or lactate levels and seeing if you can blunt mm -hmm. the, the damage of, of uh, um, the elevation, the of, elevation those. of those. Mm -hmm. And then the inflammation is by looking at a C-reactive protein in blood and s certain biomarkers that we call cytokines like interleukin-6, which is very closely linked to muscle strength as well. So we find with uh, a month or two months of supplementation, actually that's the probably the gold standard marker I tell every clinician who asks me, how do I measure mitochondrial health? How, how do I tell if your uh, stuff is working? I said, well, look first at inflammation because you, we always see a blunting of and dampening of inflammation in every trial we run.